Hey, hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy, J. Tripp. And welcome to a special episode of That's a Shoot. This is where we will talk about something specific. Yeah, specific. <laughs> it's a world of wrestling. We don't do put over and bury in these special episodes. We just talk about one thing, one main topic, and then we go ahead and we focus on that for the entire episode. So coming off of a spectacular um, uh, stomping grounds pay-per-view, we are now going to uh, talk about what WWE needs to do to get better. And yes, as, as, as with a lot of things, WWE is not perfect. It is not, you know, it needs to get better. It needs to, it needs to stop doing a lot of things. It needs to start start doing more things and, and a whole lot of other things. But, I, I, you know, I think that But, but for the most part, and Seth Rollins has been saying that, and I've been scrolling through Twitter this morning, and Seth Rollins has been, uh, he has been dribbling down, doubling down on what he said, with WWE being the the best wrestling out there, and he is without question correct. Um, and but yeah, he uh, uh, WWE is the is the best right now, and and is always you know going to be the best if, if you know and that's just how it's going to be so I, i've been enjoying his little retweets or not somebody else has been retweeting but we see them on the time on my timeline so I, i've been enjoying that but yeah so what we're going to do with on this episode is that we are going to go and we're going to go through uh some of the things that i, that I think could be um could be helpful to be better in making uh, WWE a more um, a better product. So if WWE right now is in at an eight, this could put them to a to a to a, to a nine or a ten, you know, something like that. So um, let's go ahead and let's kick it off. So I did this once before, a little over uh, a year or so ago, and I'll put that up in the corner up here and. And you can and, uh, so that you can go back and and watch that one if you want to before you want to watch this one because there might be some there's definitely gonna be some overlaps, but um but yeah so I listened to that one and then I had my own theories and and I uh, I I think where I want to start off with is something that I've talked about before in that past one and that's the the pay per view cycle that it is I. I think having a pay per view every month is one is something that kind of hurts WWE in their storytelling because they you know there isn't enough time to tell the stories that you you would probably want to tell, right? There isn't that enough time. So I was talking about this before. I think they they really need to like do like six pay per views a year. At the at the least, at the least six. At the most, I would say eight. Because they they now have this like this ten year thing with um with Saudi Arabia. So if you're gonna go back to Saudi Arabia two times a year, then okay, then 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 do eight. But it's got to be six at the very most six, and then you got to have the Royal Rumble in January. The uh, WrestleMania at um, end of March, beginning of April, and then you have at some point like you know, right? Like you, you, on, fa on Father's Day, you have uh, another pay per view. Maybe be Money in the Bank, right? You have Money in the Bank on Father's Day, and then like you know, middle to late August, you have uh, SummerSlam. And then maybe you have like uh, begin at the beginning of October, you have another pay per view. Maybe bring back Night of Champions. That's a good one. 
Yeah, you, first of all, get rid of all the gimmick pay per views. Like, um, there's no reason for Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell should be something that you that you go to for big match blow offs. You know, extremely, you know, big time blow offs. I was get rid of tables, ladders, and chairs too. I don't think that. I, I think the only. I think the only three gimmick matches I would be okay with is the Elimination Chamber pay per view. You know where you know you'd have the Elimination Chamber matches, uh, Extreme Rules, which be coming up soon in July. I think that's a that's a good one. You know to keep where every match would be in Extreme Rules or Night of Champions, where every match is is involving the champions. Although with my with my uh, with some of my other things that you know that may not be that may not be needed because every because after that every every pay per view should have the champions on it but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, but yeah, then you would have that match in October, and then you would have the 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 Sunday, you know, the Sunday of Thanksgiving. You would have Survivor Series. It, uh, you know, and you know, back in the day, Survivor Series was on a, it was on that Wednesday. It was on Wednesday, and in fact, you could even maybe even do it like on you could even do it like on Friday. What you what you could do is that you could just have you could have like you know Thanksgiving Thursday, and then you could have well, actually maybe maybe you want to give them the 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 um the the uh, that week off. So maybe you you'd have Sunday, right? You have Sunday, so then maybe what you do is your Sunday the Survivor Series, and then you do Monday, and then you do Tuesday, in which you could you would record, uh, um, you would record um, SmackDown, and then you give them Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off, and maybe even Saturday off, and tell them Sunday to get back on the road. So yeah, but but yeah, I I think that's the that's the way you go about it. You have six pay per views. Uh, and uh, and over that time, I think that gives you more time to develop storylines and develop uh, characters and to have a lot more other things go on. So, because I think right now, I think I, I do think with the the squash and, and and in effect, you like we basically now have to have three weeks until Extreme Rules. We now have three weeks to Extreme Rules to start. Possibly new feuds, or try to continue with 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 new with with new stories, you know. So, you know, I I don't know. I, I think that may not be the the right way to go about it. So, yeah, I I, I would be more apt to doing pay per view. Doing the pay per view thing, but it only six pay per views a year. I think that's that's a a, a a best one. So how about this one? Uh, there's been a lot of talk about WWE needing an off season, which I I, I, I I thought was I thought was very strange. I thought it was very I thought it was very strange. It's, it's a year round thing, and it's something that could be devastating. For WWE and you know their you know the product and their storytelling, but I, I've actually turned around on this and I've said, okay, I, I'm okay with there being an off season because then I think I think what you can do is I think what you can do is is that you can have uh, WrestleMania right? You can have WrestleMania and then you can have the uh, the Monday after WrestleMania, like we we've been having, and then you can have the uh, the Friday after WrestleMania, and whether or not you want to again you want to record that on Tuesday or you want to do that live on Friday, whatever, uh, then that's what you can do. You can have it, and then after you do those, right? After you do those. Then yeah, you can you can take a break, right? You can take a break. You can you can take like a a a three week break, where there's you know there's no wrestling on on Fox, there's no wrestling on USA, 
You know, there's no house shows, there's no nothing. And and do and during that time, what you can do is that you can use YouTube or you can use the WWE Network to do things like if the, the brand split is, is is still going on for some reason. I have no idea why, but the brand split is still going on. Then you can do the whole um you can do the whole uh shaking things up thing and the and the superstar shake up. You can do that, you know, during the, during that off season and that also will give you more time to think about, you know, you would have like this what you had this year where seemingly you had like you had all types of trades and and signings and everything like that and 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 move and moves still going on three or four weeks later so then you can just you can you can you know you can take a week off and sit down and you know plan it out and then even have a like again a special on youtube or on a network where you can talk about you know the, you guys do the superstar shake up and you would have like you know since there obviously no no gms and i'm like that but you could have like Triple H down there, you know, you know, you know, with with sitting with uh uh Cassie, Cassie, whatever her name is, Queen Cassie. I know that's just the Twitter name, Queen Cassie. Um, and you can sit down and have sit down, and you have Triple H explain what's going on and why these these moves were made and why um and 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 why people are going from from this one from this show to that show, so. Yeah, I, I I think that I think that would be helpful. I think also having a, a three week having a three or four week off season again could continue helping with storylines because as as WrestleMania is supposed to be the culmination of a year, you know that's what it should be a year, and that's where story, the main storylines, major storylines all should end, and then. Once once you come back in those three four weeks, with, with and after the superstar shake up, like that new storylines begin, and more other things should happen, um, and then that would give you time to maybe you know look and see, is is this the way we want to go? Is this you know is, is, is are you sure is this the way we want to head? You know is this is this how we want to do? And it, and it also gives you time to plan out not only what's going to happen, you know. When you come back, but maybe maybe even plan out what you want to happen for the next year, you know. So this is where we want to get to. This is where we want to. And this this is how we want to get to so and so versus so and so at WrestleMania, or so and so versus so and so at WrestleMania. So and that so that so that even so that gives the writers and the and the creative staff time to plan out what's going to happen. Now you can't obviously you can't. You can't book for injuries. Injuries will, will happen, and you, if you if the book on the fly, that's fine. But then, but but you shouldn't be booking on the fly with with nothing else, you know, going on, you know. So, so that gives you time to plan out stuff. And so, I actually do think that in off season, uh, not only the fact also that you know you you have the uh, the wrestlers getting healthier and spending time with family and being on vacation and things like that. I, was, I, I, I do agree that an off season would be better uh, and would be helpful for not only the wrestlers but also for uh, the creative staff. So I, I, I am a big fan of the, uh, having an off season. You know, I think another thing that they need to do is they need to merge the championships. I mean, there's, there, there, there's, there, there's just too many champions. It really is, and I, 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 I just, you know, I, I, I think that I, I, I just, I'm just not, I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I've not been a big fan of it. I really haven't. Not since the, the original brands, but I think having too many champions doesn't, it, it's just, it, it just makes them, doesn't make them mean anything, and they should mean something. So I think you merge the merge the women's titles, you merge the tag titles, you merge the the heavyweight champions, the universal and the heavyweight championship. I do think you keep the United States and then the continental title. You know, you keep those separate. You keep those separate because then you 
you know, you have the Grand Slam thing when it comes to many. So someone who wins the Intercontinental, the United States tag, and, and the heavyweight. Then, then you have, you know, you have someone, you know, who does that. Um, uh, and then, like, you know, and with the 20, with the 24-7 championship, I even think what you can do is, like, with that, I think you can even t at some point turn that and make that a television champion where where the, the the holder would would have to wrestle just like in WCW with a 15 minute time limit and you would you know have that so you know that you would get at least 15 minutes of wrestling on every sh on every show raw and smackdown so i i definitely think you definitely you definitely have to merge the championships you definitely have to and hopefully i think that's that could be on the way to where we're going we could be on the way of going towards that and i truly truly hope that that is what is going to happen. So, I definitely think they need to to merge the cha championships. I think another thing we got to get back into is we got to get back into the thirty day rule for champions. Champions need to defend the titles every thirty days, at least once every thirty days. And if you if, if you don't, then you are you are um. Uh, you are in, in, in. You are in danger of being stripped. You're in danger of being stripped of the champion, uh, the championship. Now, this is why I say you. That's why this, this is why I say you are in danger of being stripped, and not you will be stripped. Because I think there are other, there are some things that you you could maybe do where you could you could like. You know, you, you know, you could kind of fudge with things, something like that. Like maybe you can, you can do something where maybe the, um, you know, you were intending on on being uh, on on defending the titles, but something happened. You know, so you always you keep that open interpretation. You know, something like that. But it, obviously, if there's like a major injury, obviously if there is, you know, and and you can also do like storyline things too, where. Where you know you are the champion and and something happens, you know, you know, and you know, and you know, and you're not the champion. And of course, with all of this, you know, thing now that there hasn't been a, there hasn't been a a uh, a uh, a drug suspension since Roman, I believe, since Roman was uh, was suspended for Adderall, so. You know, first of all, first off, that's good. That's that's very very good. The fact that there's been no drug suspensions since Roman, I think that that's that's totally good. It means that these these guys are in the right minds. They're they're thinking about their, you know, their uh, the 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 product. So I like that. Um, but definitely, um, uh. But de but definitely there could be some things like that. But there was a drug suspension, and it was their second one, and it was uh you know, and it was a a you know sixty day suspension or or something like that. Then yeah, you then you would have to um be kind of, and you should also be open about it. You should be also be open about it. we should be suspending him because he failed a drug test. You know whether whether it's a face or a heel. Be be they're open about it on Twitter. Be be open about it on on the program. Be open about it on the program. Because, because again, you know, necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be for weed. It doesn't necessarily have to be for weed. You know, I I, I see maybe that's what you. I think maybe if it's if it's if it is something like like that, if it's for if it's for weed, you know, then yeah, you don't you don't put that part of the storyline. But if it's something like Roman, which was Adderall, then yeah, you make you make it a part of the storyline. You know, and you just you know, and you know, you come out there and and, and, and you tell them that if it's a, if it's a bad guy. You know, you say, "Hey, listen, listen." I, you know, you can have you know talk talk about. I, I was screwed. I was bamboozled and do all the other things. And then if you, and if you do it with a fair face, you can say, "Hey, I took something. I didn't. That's my fault. You know, I didn't. You know, I I, I didn't check the thing. You know, I, I didn't check the the you know the thing. I just like the football players do. And we don't look at the football players and anything like that." You know, sometimes we don't believe the football players or the 
the any anything like that to say that they don't check the bottle to see what drug you know is the banned substance list. But um, that's how we kind of cynical we are. But you know, and we'll be cynical about about them. But that's what they should do. So, but yeah, I think we, the day to day rule for champions needs to come back into effect. It needs to be a bigger part of, of the rest because that can help too. That can help, that can help too with, with storylines. The fact that you know that a wrestler has to has to wrestle or has to defend your title at least once a month, or at least once every thirty days, maybe not once a month, because of February twenty eight. Yeah. Although that would be interesting, right? You know, he <laughs> somebody would win a champion at on like January thirty first, and they wouldn't have to defend it to March. That, that would be that would be that would be very crazy, like. So now let's talk about some of the things that WWE need to stop doing. We've already done the things that they could, they can do to make it better, right? Some, but let's talk about some of the things that they need to stop doing. And how about the overly scripted promos? We talked about the whole Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley thing, where everything was so scripted. And the, and one of the things that I thought that was very interesting was that. You know, he, he had something where he, he talked about where it was a note for Vince where he said that he needed to know, you know, that where Dean needed to know what he was, you know, why he need, and he, uh, he needs to read it and why he needs to read it word for word. And that's something that I, I think that I would agree with with, with, uh, with Dean slash John Moxley, you know, in that effect that, no, that's not necessarily the case. I, you know, I, I don't think that needs to be, what happens? Because th that that what happens with with, with Roman and why Roman it you know was was you know got turned on the first time because they were having him read these scripted promos and he was saying suffering succotash and doing all this other stuff and and he he wasn't being more of himself or he wasn't you know or he wasn't saying stuff that was 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 good. You know, and so I, so I think one of the things they need to do with the, the, the promos is that the, the, I think there's three things. I think one thing is that they need doesn't need to be so scripted. It needs to be, you know, what the promo is about, right? Just you know, and give them bullet points to hit on. So if you want, if you, if you need them to hit on this, this, and this, they can hit on the bullet points, you know. Yeah, so and I think that I, I definitely think that's a better way to go about in the promo. So, it, so, so if you want the promo to be about, you know, there's a specific uh, a specific storyline. For instance, let's take Nikki Cross and 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 Alexa Bliss one. So, if 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 if, if that storyline is gonna end up being where Alexa Bliss, where we all think it is, Alexa Bliss is gonna turn on Nikki Cross, right? Then when they do a promo, Nikki Cross need, she, she needs okay. Nikki you need to hit on how you trusted Alexa. You need to hit on how you you know how it was it, it was you know I feel bad for doubting Bailey. I'm gonna kick the living crap out of Alexa Bliss for doing that to me. You know you know instead but don't give her you know the the scripted promos where she gets the stuff like that and 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 and, and, and it's and it doesn't come off a part of who she is part of who she is and I think that was one of the things he was talking about with the creative freedom the creative freedom of the of the uh, wrestlers so um I think that needs to happen one uh, uh two when it's when it's a, like a face to face promo or something like that I I think that you know there could be more conversational you know conversational promos where it's just not somebody in the ring talking and then when they hit and then, then when they hit their point that's the cue for the other person to talk I, I do think because because you because that's not because and well I say that you when when you have it when you have a respectful conversation right when you are having a respectful conversation Things like that happen. You go back and you wait for the other person to speak, you know, something like that. But most of the time, that's not happening. You're not waiting on the respectful, uh, the respectful thing to happen. What you are waiting on is you're waiting on the 
you know, waiting on the, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, they're just kind of a, almost a disrespectful type of thing, you know, where the respect from the two is not necessarily all there. So it needs to be kind of a back and forth thing and maybe interrupting everybody and, and everything like that. So I think that would be more, more helpful with the promos. And I also think, uh, uh, the third thing with the, when it comes down to the promos is to have, uh, the people get into people who are not into, uh, uh, who are not that great at cutting promos, have them take some improv classes. Have them take you know, to help them with to help them get better with their promo so that when something happens, you know, or if you, if you if you're going if you're going to keep it scripted, right? If you're going to keep it so heavily scripted, have them take improv classes so that if they forget their lines, they're not out there just staring the space, you know. You know they can, you know they, you know they can go there. And you know, and they can you know, say something to riff off of it, or if they, if they just got that improv. See, I I I think, and this may be just me, but I think when the when the whole Randy Orton Triple H thing happened a couple of weeks ago, trying to promote Super Showdown, I think I think at the end there, that was that was unscripted, when Randy Orton was talking about uh uh you know uh, Stephanie. Having uh you know Triple H's balls in in, in 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 her purse. I think that was unscripted. So, I, so I, and I think the Triple H came back with his unscripted lines. So I I, I, I kind of just think that so I, so and I think that and it, it was a little bit better and a little bit fun. So I I think that needs to to kind of help down with uh help with the, the promos make, maybe make the promos a little bit better. The next thing that WWE needs to start doing are the contract signings. It is, it is just one. It's one of the the laziest things that they they harp on, you know, with the contract signings. And it, it's, it, it just isn't something that, that I am, I am a big fan of. It, it is not, because because it, because it, it all ends. Most of them end the same way. I think that was one, one recently that did not end in the way. I, th I think that might have been the one a couple years ago between AJ Styles and and uh, and Shinsuke Nakamura, where it didn't end with, with it didn't end with a fight. You know, if 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 they if some of these contract signings, would, uh, well, actually no, actually the the Ronda Rousey um, one with with um, Brie Bella didn't end with a fight either, but. Or Nikki Bella, excuse me, but most of them end with the same way. They end up with a brawl, and is uh, and it's 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 so overdone and it's so it's so passe. It's like the Hill Authority figure, um, which by the way I didn't have on my list because I did not expect that Shane McMahon would turn heel and become a Hill Authority figure. So come on, Hill Authority figure should not. It, it, I shouldn't even have to put it on this list. Anyway, but the contract signings are just it is it's to pull a contract term. Contract signings are so null and void, and they really need to stop doing them. I mean, this next one is kind of obvious to say, right? But um, definitely, the the fifty fifty booking is something that just it has to go. It really it 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 it, it, it does because it it does hurt. I like a lot of people. It does hurt um, people that you, that that you want to get over. I think it, I think it in in some phrase of fashion it hurt. It's hurt, it's hurt people like Drew McIntyre. Um, it's hurt people like Baron Corbin. I think it. I think it's it's hurt. It's hurt, it's hurt a lot of the 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 uh, the the heels in some form of fashion because I think because they have switched. You know. The, I, th I think baby faces, the, whether baby faces win a lot or baby faces lose a lot, it's all it, it's always going to be it's always going to be better for baby faces because the crowd is into them. A crowd is into them. Um, the crowd should not be into the heels, uh, as we all know. Although sometimes we know that that changes, 
but they should not be into the heel. So the fact that if a heel keeps losing, the crowd would be more or less, less than like with Bray Wyatt, right? People get, okay, but Bray Wyatt kept losing, so we're not going to really be into the fact that, you know, you are who you say you are. But if a, but if a, if, if, if a, Babyface said, "Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm such and such, and I'm trying so hard." Okay, he's trying his hardest, but he, he can't get it done. You know, that's okay though. That's because that's all of us. All of us try our hardest, and we just can't get it done. You know, but so that, so I definitely think the fifty-fifty booking is something that they really need to 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 hire on, and they really and they really just need to. And, and it's an offshoot of that. They really just need to, like, say who, who, you know, who are their favorite guys? Who are the guys that they want to, you know, push? And that would be one of the things with the offseason. Because the offseason, maybe that would be something that they could do is that they can put on the board who are the guys they want in a main event, who are the guys who they want in the mid card, who are the guys they want, you know, in the undercard. And, and that's what you do. So then you know okay, so the undercard guys are the guys that are the guys that need to go out, open the show. They, they, they're the ones who are who will beat up jobbers, you know, on, on, on Raw and on SmackDown, and they'll get over that way. You know, they'll, they'll get over that way. But when they face, like, the, the you know, the mid, the, 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 on the mid card, then they will, you know, they'll more than likely take most often take the fall, you know, unless you unless you think that someone who has worked hard on the undercard deserves to be put in the mid card, and then maybe something like that. But otherwise, you know, and the same thing with the mid card, mid card guys, you know, you know, maybe there might be some 50 50 booking around there around the mid card, but for the most part, it, there should not be you no, know, you know, 50 50 you know, booking. You know anywhere in in WWE, you know, because that that just that just hurts everybody, you know, and, and it doesn't make anybody feel special. So how about the WWE stop being petty? I th I think that's one of the things that they, they just they are just they they are so petty, and it's ridiculous. You know, Chris Jericho wanted to help promote WrestleMania by having some. Some, some WWE wrestlers on his podcast, and they wouldn't let they wouldn't let the wrestlers go because Chris Jericho is affiliated with AEW, and you know that's not something that I I, I don't know why you know and then you know Undertaker was gonna be at Scar Undertaker and Kurt Angle they were gonna be at at, at Starcast and you know uh, and. Uh, they they weren't allowed to go. They didn't have to go. And in fact, you know, they they even did the thing where they they pulled in Undertaker to have this match Super Showdown with Goldberg. So it, it's it's you know, stop with the pettiness. You are WWE. You have been around for generations. And you will continue to be around for generations. Stop acting like you are some, as Jim Cornette would say, you are some outlaw mud show. Because <laughs> you're not. You're the fucking WWE. And with that being said, let's also go right into the next one. The, the, the talent that is underused and wants to want their, wants their release. Just let them go. Let them go. Really. Because, you know, who needs them? You don't need Sasha Banks. You don't need the Revival. You don't need anybody else who wants to go. So let them go. Luke Harper. Like why why are you adding six months to Luke Harper's contract and not not using him on TV? He's going around asking Vince, I want to ask for my release. Or you know, get to talk to Triple H about that. Uh, where's Triple H at? You know, he can't talk to Triple H. Let these people go. If they go to AEW, so what? So what? And it, and, it, and it helps you out too because guess what? You've got a bunch of talent. You've got a bunch of talent that is being underused. It really is. 
you you uh, you got you got so much talent being underused. You created the twenty four seven championship just so that you could have something for them to do. You know, you've got five hours of television to put on each and every week. That, that that's that's not what 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 needed to be. And that's not what should have been. So yeah, I mean really stop being petty. Stop you know, stop stopping your, your, your current wrestlers and your and your legends from, from doing things that can help, help help promote you and promote your your stuff and promote you know and, and, and promote them and make them money and and and, and let, let wrestlers that want to leave let them go let them go because they, they, they'll find out the grass isn't always greener on the other side it's not they'll go somewhere else and then they will be you know in the same spot you know if not differently so it, it's just it's whatever Stop being petty, WWE. And my final uh, thing to help with the WWE and have a better product this doesn't necessarily have to do with WWE. It's to do with you, fans. You got to be more open to to what WWE does. You got to be more open to what they are. I've said this time and time again, and I, I, I truly believe it. The fans who who shit on the product, who are upset with the decisions that they make, they are not WWE fans. They are either they are either just trolls and WWE should not listen to trolls. Nobody should listen to trolls. They are trolls. They are w they are former WCW fans who were never WWE fans, or they are wrestling fans who go to the WWE show. Oh, or, or, or watching the WWE product because that's the only uh, the, us the only wrestling show that is around to watch, right? Because, to me, to to shit on a product that that they have put out for you, to you know, and let's let's take last night for example. Let's take last night, right? They do the they do the the whole special guest referee thing, right? And they give you a darn good. Um, thing with it being Lacey Evans as a special guest referee, I I, I thought that was fantastic, and fantastic on two levels. One, I thought it was fantastic because of the whole Becky Lynch thing, which they, they were they they were all about that last night. They kept talking about Becky and Seth being a couple and being boyfriend and girlfriend and everything like that. So. There was a lot of talk about that, right? A lot of talk about them being together. And then Lacey Evans is a special guest referee. And then the second part of that is that it's a woman. He, Seth was going around hitting everybody with a chair. So he's not, is he now going to hit Lacey Evans, a woman, with a chair? No. It was perfect. Like it's like it's, well, it wasn't perfect. Like I said, I think a better one maybe would have been Charlotte. It maybe would have been someone like Charlotte, and then you could have, you know, you could have ripped off the that, bring back on the back end Charlotte feud and everything like that. You know, because then they could have probably moved away because that you probably what you probably need to do as Becky Lynch has has beaten Lacey Evans now twice in almost convincing fashion, um, tapped her out twice. There's probably no reason for this feud to continue, but this is still this is still really really good. 
what the what does the crowd do? The crowd chants, "This is stupid," and starts chanting AEW and CM Punk. Again, these 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 are trolls. These are not fans. These are not WWE fans. These are these are these are just ridiculously, ridiculously foolish people, and so you know. And, and and if you do consider yourself a WWE fan, and you do consider yourself like you know someone who is upset with the product, upset with the product, and upset with the decisions that they do, because again, like I said, I I am consider myself a WWE fan, and sometimes I I I, I don't know why the fuck Shane McMahon is a heel. I don't know why Shane McMahon is getting so much time. I don't know why Shane McMahon is now in a two on one match with Roman Reigns tonight. After he beat Drew McIntyre, I don't know why. I don't know why. But I'm, I'm not. But I'm, I'm not going to. Like, 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 go all bonkers and start chanting. If I was at a live, I would not chant chant CM Punk or a, especially AEW. See that? That's that's a super troll. That's a super troll move. So it is so at this point, like it's 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 just it's just on you. And I would agree. I, and I I I, uh, I saw a CM Punk. I, I didn't ask, I didn't actually see his tweet or I didn't, uh, but I saw like a video from one of the other wrestling YouTube stations, and they were you know they had their CM Punk tells wrestling fans to stop watching wrestling. That's you know that's what I would kind of say. I would kind of say. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's it's been happening. A lot of people have been saying that they don't watch anymore. That they don't they don't watch WWE anymore. So yeah, I mean, just just yeah. So stop, because because really really because you're not again you're not WWE fans. You're not, and and, and so and, and don't come to their shows. Don't come to their shows and then you know troll them. I'm I'm, I'm so sick of this. I really am. I'm so sick of it. Because you're not fans, you're not being cool, you're not showing your displeasure to the company. You're just being a fucking asshole. That's all you're being. So go away, go. Gee. So there you have it. Those would be the changes that I would make to WWE. What are the changes that you would make to WWE? Post them in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about mine as well. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Yeah, let me know down in the comment section. Like the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. That to Shoot will be back on Friday in its normal time with a normal episode. Where we were put over and buried, and we'll have another main topic to talk about. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.